Hi, I'm DJ Ghetto Steve, and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Tonight, I am going to be talking with Snorkel. She is also a former homeschooler, used some different uh, curriculum than I did. Uh, so we're going to be talking about what it was like to homeschool and just kind of see where the, the conversation goes from there. So Snorkel, hi, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me on your channel. Absolutely. Uh, so the first thing I want to ask everybody is what did your day in the life look like? So you wake up in the morning. What does your kind of school day house day look like? Um, for me, it varied a whole lot um, from when I was very young to like late elementary, middle school and then high school. It, it changed a whole lot um, from what I can remember when I was younger. Um, it was mostly just, you know, get up get dressed and then whenever my mom had time we would go through uh, we had books at first and at first it wasn't a, a particularly Christian curriculum it was just your basics like learning how to read we had the f hooked on phonics book um, you know numbers grammar just basic all through I think like third or fourth grade it was like that um, and then uh, it was when I started getting into like late middle school, high school, we started using a Christian curriculum that was on CDs. Mm. And so instead of having to have my mom sit there and like explain the lesson to me, um, part of the reason they wanted this is because it would make me more of an independent student. Mm. Um, and so I could just kind of pop in, it had one CD for each subject and I could just pop that in and then read it myself and then listen to the prompts and everything. And it was very hands off for them. Gotcha. Uh, so then, let's see, I think you said it was Alpha and Omega curriculum that you guys were using? Yeah, I think that's the like parent company. It was called Switched On Schoolhouse. Um, I don't know if it was one of the first like digital Christian homeschool curriculums or not. Um, they do still sell it. I looked that up, but it's by Alpha and Omega. Okay. And were you guys ever part of a, a co-op or a homeschool support group, anything like that? Yeah, we were. It was, I don't know how official it was or how official these things really can be. Um, but there was a group of homeschoolers in the area that they primarily used the Abeka curriculum. Ah. Um, I didn't know anybody who used the same one as I did. And they were a lot more um, like traditionally fundamentalist than my family was. My family mm -hmm. was kind of diet fundy. <laughs> um, but these, these other kids were very, these other families were very, very fundamentalist. And, um, my mom would teach them Spanish and in return, I would get to go to these co-ops and I guess try to have quote unquote socialization when right. I was like in high school. Um, so yeah. And so in the, the co-op, I'm betting given the surrounding families that were part of it, uh, did you guys ever get into like Answers in Genesis or Kent Hoven when it came to Big time. creationism? Big time. Um, a lot of my memories from like middle school science and on was just essentially just watching the Kent Hoven DVDs because we had all of them. Yes. Um, just on repeat watching them. And I, I mean, I was a kid. I didn't know better. I bought into all of it. Hook, line and sinker. Yep. Um, I wrote really cringy poems and songs about creationism and how evil Darwin was and all oh this my stuff. Goodness, yes. Um, and answers in Genesis, we did get into also um, with Ken Ham and all that. Even, I think, I don't remember when the Ark Encounter was built, but I remember my family was real excited about it. And I think I missed, narrowly missed them trying to make me go to that. I think I had started college by then. I think it was 2013. Oh, yeah, I was definitely, wrong. I was out of the house by then. <laughs> yeah. But, that was... but yeah, they were all about that. And they, they love Ken Ham still. Now that Ken Hovind's kind of fallen from grace, they've yes. jumped back onto the Ken Ham thing and answers in Genesis. Although I, they're cut from the same cloth. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, they're just competing for clout. Mm -hmm. Now, through the, the self-led learning, um, one of the things that I talked about in my video about my experience with homeschooling was that I really felt 
underserved in that so much was self-led and that it wasn't until I got into college where I actually had an opportunity even to seek out study groups or even just to chit chat with people about a particular topic. Um, did you have any particular holes, I guess, for, for lack of a better word that you have uh, looked back to see? Definitely. Um, I actually watched your video and I found it very interesting. Um, and I feel like I can relate to you because <laughs> math was also the place where I just, mm. it didn't click for me and I had struggles with it. Like from God, whenever long division started and on, um, <laughs> I, I did go to high school for the last year of high school. Okay. Um, before I went to college and I went to a very small Christian college also, but, um, definitely math. And especially once we got into like the digital learning, I did not have help with that. The, the lessons just went over my head. Something about it didn't click. Mm -hmm. And I, it took me until I went to public school for that one year for a teacher to catch on that I didn't understand and actually explain things to me. Um, because my parents just didn't have the time, didn't have the knowledge. They were burnt out a lot of the time. And mm -hmm. the most they would do was look for like some kind of online tutor thing, but I still had to figure it out myself. And so math was never one of my strong suits, but there was, and probably still is a pretty big gap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Math is just, you got to really be able to look at things from a particular perspective to, to make it all jive and... Yeah, it's it's a skill. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. So when you went to college, what did you major in? Um, I got a degree in history and ethnic studies. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, also majored in history, though I did not finish. Um, oh, yeah. So in the social realm, um, you said your parents were kind of diet fundy. So were you allowed to date? Did you have any specific rules around dating? Oh, Lordy. Um, <laughs> it was, I was not really allowed to date. Um, they were very big on the whole courting thing, especially because the Duggars were big at the time and the mm. Josh Harris and I kissed yes. dating goodbye. Everyone in the co-op was reading that. It mm -hmm. was a very big deal. Um, and I know there were for sure a couple of fundy families my mom had kind of hoped I would get with. <laughs> and that just, that was not happening ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so dating, I, I ended up, um, you know, learning about dating and sex and all kinds of things in very unhealthy ways because I had to hide it all from my parents. You know, they were big on the whole saving pieces of your heart and um, mm. purity culture was a very, very big thing. Uh, I still have some books that I was given and that my mom got me about that. And it's just, I've been thinking about rereading them. Just, it's not very good for my mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where is this actually me deconstructing and making peace with this or am I just triggering myself unnecessarily yeah I think if I ever did I would want to just go through them so other people are aware of what's actually in them before yeah. they think oh this looks harmless and nice leave some really detailed reviews on Amazon books yeah yeah for sure um so yeah the the dating thing was a no-go um they weren't as strict as some people are I'm sure like by the time I was a senior in high school, they kind of accepted that I was going to have boyfriends, but they tried to tell me things like, oh, no kissing, blah, 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 and none of this and that, and just hold hands, and, you know, it was very controlling. I remember being told that uh, when boys and girls held hands, there was a hormone transfer that would lead to wild, unbridled passions, and so you shouldn't hold hands with someone of the opposite sex. Yikes, that's terrible. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. It was not somebody in my immediate family. I, I want to say it was like a Sunday school teacher or something. But yeah, that's it's just unnecessary. Uh, yeah. Now, you said they were kind of using the co-op as socialization. So did you have other friends outside of the co-op or were you pretty much limited to just the, you know, approved children within the co-op? It was very, very limited. Um, my best friend was in the co-op, although I met her at a different church-related group. Um, 
but she was, I think that's part of the reason my mom got involved with it is because her mom was involved in it and our moms became mm-hmm. friends. Um, but yeah, all the kids I knew were from the co-op. It wasn't until like that final year I went to high school, I started making actual friends. Um, I feel like a little bit before then we had started to kind of drift away from the co-op um, because we moved and oh. not like far, far away, but like, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes away. Sure. And so I started to kind of make more friends at church, but we never really got close. I'm trying to think. There weren't very many people I felt like I could relate to because all of them were so much more uh, fundamentalist than my family was. And so I stood out because I wore pants <laughs> and I didn't have butt length hair. Yeah. Um. And so things like that made me feel awkward, um, like I didn't fit in. I always felt judged by the other kids and especially the other moms. Um, but for the most part, I feel like I, I got along pretty well with a few kids. Um, I was part of a sports team, if you want to call it that, where we all gather, and, well, them in their denim skirts and me in my jeans and play volleyball or basketball or something for a couple of hours, I guess, for our P.E., or whatever. <laughs> did you ever do Awanas? I did not. Um, my family wasn't really Baptist. The The families in the co-op were very Baptist. Ah. Um, but my family wasn't. We were just, we kind of bounced around between churches. Um, mostly a lot of the like really charismatic churches. Oh, okay. Um, and so I never did the Awanas. I've heard a lot about it though. <laughs> um, did you get into like 4-H, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any of the more like secular uh, extracurriculars? Nope. Not gotcha. a bit. Uh, did you ever have like animals at home, like rabbits or guinea pigs or anything? Um, no, I did have um, a cat when I was younger, uh, but we had to move and had to give them away. Aww. So, I, and then I, I did have a very traumatic experience with getting a puppy, and then my parents didn't like the puppy, and so it went to live on a farm. Aww. I mean, it really did. They didn't kill okay, it or anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, woke up one day and the puppy was gone. So. Aww. That's too bad. Now, do you think that there was something that your parents could have tweaked during the process to make it a more academically fulfilling experience? Yeah, I feel like if they had actually checked in, um, especially as I got, you know, into eighth grade and above, I feel like maybe they would have caught those gaps uh, before it was Mm -hmm. kind of a crisis. And... Like they were, they were very busy with all the things they were trying to do and my siblings and stuff. And I was the only one who was using the digital curriculum because everyone else was too young for it and they didn't oh. buy the younger version, I guess. But so I think they, they wanted it because it would free up a lot of their time and because the tests and everything were automatically graded by the program and you just kind of, you move forward as you go. And sometimes I would get really far ahead in some things because I was supposed to be still doing school until X amount of time. Right. Um, but for a lot of things like the math and sometimes the science, I just couldn't grasp it and would get stuck until they had to go in and then manually approve. Because if you messed up too many test questions and you didn't pass, it would require your parent to go in on like sign in as the parent or teacher or whatever, and then manually approve it. Um, and that's how like papers and uh, other projects were graded also. Although I feel like I, I don't really remember writing many papers or doing many projects. So I think mm-hmm. they kind of let me off the hook for that. Gotcha. Um, but for math, especially they would go in and just, um, if they didn't have time to explain it, they would just approve it and let me move on without understanding a concept. And so I had nothing to build it on. Yeah. And I really wish I would have said something to them about how, like, I'm really not getting it and I'm trying very hard and I need more help. Um, I, as a kid who was, Also pretty independent. Like, I liked being a self-sufficient learner and not having someone breathing down my neck. But I kind of wish I would have been wise enough to say I need help with this because it'll be important later. I just didn't think it would. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And I've I've gone over this in, in some of my more doctrinal denominational videos. But there's... A decent amount of theology, especially in the churches that I attended, where you were not supposed to have needs. And so then it became harder as you got older and tried to implement that to communicate needs that you actually need to communicate. Um, 
I think it, it also kind of goes back to whether or not parents are creating a safe space where a kid actually feels safe to say things that Mm -hmm. they might be worried about um with your family not quite being as as fundy um was that still anything that you dealt with yeah I, I feel like it really was I distinctly remember feeling like I was a burden to my family and like I had to try really hard as the oldest to not need too much and help out as much as possible um part of it was just because I saw how hard my parent work, my parents work to provide for us. And part of it was also just the, the conditioning and the, like you said, the theology with a a healthy dose of sexism built in there because I was the oldest and a girl that it was my responsibility to help out as much and to not need as much. And if I needed anything, I was taking attention away from the younger siblings or from anything else that needed doing. And that it was my job to just kind of, be all smiles and all helpful and, you know, keep sweet and not make a fuss, not make any waves. And I used to keep a diary and I remember writing things about how I was going to try harder to like eat less and need less and all this stuff because I didn't want to be a burden on my family. So which character from Encanto are you and why is it Luisa? I've actually not seen that movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know, right? Heresy. I've not <laughs> seen it. Um, my husband watched it with our kid and I i don't remember what I was doing. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But <laughs> I have not actually seen it. Okay, well, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. It's, it's great perspective on family systems. I've heard that. I might give it a try. So... Going forward with your own kids, um, did you have any inclinations about doing homeschool or incorporating any homeschool into their general education? Or was it more of a anything but this, I, I have to do something different? Um, I'm still I'm still struggling with that. And we've talked about it. It's hard to say because he's still, you know, too young to to even think about school right Mm -hmm. now but I'm conflicted because I know not all homeschooling experiences are bad Mm -hmm. um you know some people have really good experiences and not everything about my experience was bad right um you know there's there's good and bad mixed I think I do want to encourage him to read at a young age because that's Mm -hmm. something I loved was reading I still love reading it's very important to me and I learned to read when I was like three or four yeah and so I want to pass that on to him and any other kids we have. That's a big deal. But at the same time, I don't feel like I'm qualified to teach and I don't want to rob him of anything. And I want to make sure he has the best education possible that I can give him. Whether that means I homeschool him for part of it or I'm just very involved with him going to public school or if I can Mm -hmm. ever afford a private school. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know that if I homeschool him, I will never use these curriculums. Not a Becca, not Switch on Schoolhouse. I mean, for so many reasons, even if I was going to be super involved with it, there are just so many things in the curriculum that are problematic. Yeah. Um, Like when I watched your video talking about the the views on slavery and indigenous Mm -hmm. people, um, and it's just so, so harmful and so messed up. And I don't want my kid exposed to that. Yeah, exactly. Um, There, there is a reason that it was what, 2021, before it actually made major news about there being residential schools that yeah. happened in what the early 1900s like it, it took us over a hundred years to go hey you know we as a society should say that this is bad uh, yeah we, i mean there's people alive now this. who were put in residential schools and that's mm-hmm. just a travesty um and especially as um as a, a BIPOC woman, I, it's important for me and, and for my kids to not get the whitewashed version version of history. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there was actually a textbook that I ran across when I was looking up different curriculums. And it was specifically, I think it was called American History, or no, it was African History from a Decolonized Perspective. And I was like, that is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I I want to teach my kids the the whole story, whether they get it from me or public school or a combination. 
I, I just don't want them to be indoctrinated by the same things that I was. Cause it took a whole lot of unlearning and a whole lot of deconstruction. Um, and you know, I don't know how different my life would be if I hadn't had to put all that time towards that instead of just living life. And it, also it's hard to come to grips with things that used to believe so firmly mm-hmm. and things used to hold so dearly and realize that it's wrong and problematic. Uh, even the, the whole Kent Hovind creationism thing took me a lot of time to come to grips with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel like the homeschool experience has had either a positive or a negative influence on your adult relationship with your parents? Oh, it's had a negative, um, negative effect for sure. Um, there's still a lot of, I don't want to say animosity, but like hard feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like as I became an adult and got into the real world and something they would always tell me was, oh, you'll understand when you're in the real world, how things really work and how we're right about everything. And that's only been the opposite. Yeah. Um, I've gotten so much more liberal and progressive as I've gotten older and experienced life for myself. And so realizing that they were wrong and I mean, maybe it was, it was true for them. Oh, but sure. the fact that they're so unmoving on their stances still, there's a lot we still can't talk about, about politics, about religion. Um, you know, they, they were super upset when they found out that my family had gotten the COVID vaccine. Yeah. And so just things as small as that are a huge deal. Or finding out that, you know, no, I'm not voting for Trump. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. What's wrong with you? You really thought I would? And how, right? are you, how are you possibly doing this? And, <laughs> um, so it's there's a lot of subjects we just can't even bring up because it, it's such a sore spot. And they think yeah. I'm some crazy feminazi brainwashed person because college taught me all wrong. Like they don't like the college I went to either. I hate it for a whole bunch of different reasons but they hate it because they think it somehow made me too liberal when Mm -hmm. really I didn't even deconstruct till after college because it was a tiny Christian college (laughs) well something that was wild for me was when I was looking back at college and immediately after it wasn't anything that I learned or was exposed to after I transferred to the state school all the quote-unquote damage to my faith happened while I was at the extreme christian university it it was having discussions with other people that were from different uh denominations or slightly different churches and having one amazing philosophy professor who graded me a's on everything even when he didn't necessarily agree with me but said that i gave excellent supporting evidence for you know, point X, Y, Z. Now, how do you feel about like standardized testing and educational evaluations? Uh, Do you think if there were regulations putting something like that in place that it would kind of standardize what the homeschool experience looks like to secure it a little more academically? Um, I don't know that I'm really qualified to answer that. I <laughs> personally, I feel like standardized testings um, have good and bad aspects to them. Mm-hmm. You know, if the teacher is only teaching for the test, students might not actually learn concepts that they need later. And having been homeschooled the way that I was, I did a lot of learning for the test and mm-hmm. less about concepts. And that was pretty damaging. But on the other hand, I feel like it's at least one kind of safeguard against complete educational neglect. Mm -hmm. Um, I do, even when I was homeschooled, I remember going and sitting in a class, uh, like a public school, Mm -hmm. like once a year or something to take a TCAP or something like that. And uh, it was... It was fine. I always did really well on those because Mm -hmm. I'm really good at testing. Um, I, I... cram very well I retain information very well I just some concepts are hard for me to wrap my head around but I always excelled at the standardized testing and so I guess maybe that's part of the reason nobody realized I was falling behind (laughs) Um, so I think if standardized testing maybe looked a little different and sought Mm -hmm. to understand how well I I don't know what this would look like but if they could measure how well children are understanding concepts rather than just memorizing answers I feel like that could be a way to make sure that 
everyone being homeschooled at least gets some kind of standard education necessary to become a functioning member of society. Right, exactly. And you can still include your Bible study classes. You can still include your sanitized sex ed. But, you know, let's make sure that they know the difference between um, a, a tax and a fee. <laughs> or, right. You know, they, they that was another thing. They can identify Netherlands. Yeah, learning life skills was not addressed at all, like how to open a bank account, how to file your taxes, how to even apply for college, how to apply for a job, how to make a resume. None of that was covered. Yeah. Um, homeschooled or in public school for that year that I went. Um, and that's something I feel like everybody's failing at is preparing oh. kids for becoming adults. 100%. 100%. Now, we need an adulting to- class. <laughs> When I was a senior, my parents gave me a a little bit of a sit down to explain how to balance a checkbook. And they went with me when I got my first job to open a savings account. So I vaguely knew what was going on. But I mean, I was 12 years old when we set up that savings account. And then I get 18 and I've got to start bank accounts and I've got places wanting to sell me credit cards. It, it's just, it's a nightmare oh, yeah. how the credit card thing. we expect these 19, 20, 21 year old kids to be and then hold them accountable to the same standard that we would someone who's 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a big gap for everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you'd think that it would be addressed more with homeschooling. Yeah, if, you if would the think. Parents, they're teaching kids life schools uh, or life uh, lessons. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's something I'm going to teach my kid regardless. Yeah. Basic adulting skills. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I, I definitely knew how to cook, sew and knit. Um, (laughs) same except for sewing because my mom still can't sew. Oh no. But (laughs) I actually really like sewing it. I was such a little nerd when I was a, a, high schooler because they they would throw like any and all hobbies at me and I'm like yeah that sounds great yeah that sounds great and uh I I think part of it was just anything to get myself out of the house oh yeah I can relate (laughs) even going to the co-op sometimes felt like a break (laughs) that's true that is true uh youth group even though it was you know heavily chaperoned inside the church i certainly wasn't going to be doing anything crazy there but that felt like escape lord some of the my worst influences that taught me the worst things were in youth group <laughs> that like the churches fact. we went to it was i mean it was still heavily supervised and chaperoned and everything but repressed kids find ways <laughs> that is absolutely true I remember uh, sneaking in an Orbitz bottle. Do you remember Orbitz? Um, It was the little, like, gelatin thing, balls that would float around in the soda. Oh, yes. So I had an empty Orbitz bottle, and and from somewhere, I have no idea where, but I had gotten a hold of some vodka. So I put it in the (laughs) Orbitz bottle. And so I take it into the youth group lock-in, and we're watching Mortal Kombat and uh, having a good time. And I am mixing this this quote-unquote soda uh, with with mixers uh, throughout. And I ended up running out of anything good and was stuck with grape soda. So the oh, next no. morning, when the folly of my youth was made evident... Um, <laughs> It, it was a purple geyser, and I have not been able to have purple soda ever since then. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But yeah, it's, it's, it's so funny because it was weird transitioning out of missions because all of the missionary kids were pretty good for the most part. Uh, the ones that were at boarding schools while their parents did missions, they were a little bit different. They were a little bit more rowdy. Um But those of us that were actually, like, engaged in missions with our parents um, were were a little bit more well-behaved. And then I get out of that, and I am interacting more with preacher's kids. And preacher's kids are a whole different breed. Um, Yeah, I I will forever say that they are are definitely 
at the top of that. that they the are. Pile. As as a former preacher's kid, I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. It, it really. We is. were we were never as wild as getting. At least I never saw anyone bringing vodka. But we did pass around a bottle of uh, vanilla extract. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Taking swigs of that was pleasant. It was Didn't always do anything. the weird dare. Like, cookies. <laughs> like, here is this new flavor of, of extreme sour warhead. You have to put it in your mouth and not make any faces. And Oh my gosh. How many uh, giant marshmallows can you stuff in your mouth and still say Chubby Bunny? It, we, I remember we had Chubby the Bunny. the things ever. Granted, I think that's partly because it was the 90s, so. Yeah, I feel like that's that had a part to play. <laughs> I mean, I was, I think I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, but I, in the, I remember the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any kind of final parting thoughts for anyone who is a homeschool graduate and kind of initially trying to grapple with transitioning to the real world? Um, I would just say, read everything you can, learn everything you can, um, and if you have to ask for help or ask for guidance, that's not a bad thing. Um, I wish I would have asked for more guidance. It's okay to ask for help. Um, it's okay to keep digging. You know, I don't want to say do your own research because it makes me sound like the the crazy anti-vax people on Facebook, <laughs> but do your do your own research. It's okay to unlearn some things. It's okay to question what you've been taught. And even if someone's homeschooled without a crazy religious background, you know, it's okay to brush up on things or learn new mm -hmm. skills. There's so many new ways to learn new skills. And, you know, I feel like I'm a lifelong learner and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just my personality or homeschooling that kind of instilled that in me. Um, but there's now more than ever new ways to learn all kinds of things. Um, and also to, like you said this in your video too, but like, don't hold it against yourself or blame yourself. If you feel like you don't understand things as well as other people, it's not your fault how you were raised. Um, all you can do is try to learn what you need mm -hmm. to know. And some, for some people, yeah, that, that complicated math is never going to be a part of your life. For me, it ended up being mostly a non-issue because I don't know that I will ever need to do complicated algebra. Mm -hmm. um, and I know the basics now, but if it makes you feel self-conscious, you can still learn as an adult and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I think it's also okay to question your beliefs and then keep some of them. Like I, I'm still a Christian. Mm -hmm. I am a very progressive Christian. Um, and my deconstruction has only led me to like a very, very progressive version of Christ and one that my parents and I definitely don't see eye to eye on, but just everything I was raised with has been proven wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's okay too. And for other people, if they want to keep on with it, I, I guess that's okay. Although there's, it's hard to say that because there's a lot of harmful beliefs still perpetuated. And I don't want to say that's okay, but at the same time. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, yeah. theoretically, um, <laughs> while we have it. Um, but yeah, just never stop learning things. Absolutely. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time tonight. I look forward to snarking with you, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for having me. I wish you luck on all your interviews. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>